in jail. I read so books happened, and I wrote. How you end up going to jail? So I want to say, man, it was like probably two months after our last interview. <laughs> uh, fucking um, I got a song about it. It's called Nine Millimeter, and I feel like everybody turned that shit into Gio was shooting at somebody went to jail because that's damn show what the Livingston Parish deputies thought. But no, man, I was uh recording this dude who was my friend at the time, and uh we just like guns and he likes knives. So fucking we just fucking with guns and knives. I just got this Beretta because the Taurus was too damn big. You know what I'm saying? I kind of had some shit going on. I felt like I needed that shit and really didn't need that shit like that. It was some little boy shit. But fucking, um, they have a screw on the side of that Beretta. So I kind of like it popped it off, you know, just looking at it or whatever. Popped it back on, man. Clicked that shit a couple times without the clip because for some reason that in the barrel wasn't lining up and it was aggravating me. So I fucking um, clicked it a couple times. I was like, okay, it's cool. Just left it on the bed. Came back, put the clip in. I was like, man, that shit still don't line up. Clicked that bitch. Pull the trigger. Boom. Bitch went through the fucking window. Went through the next people's apartment. The people's apartment it went through, thank God they weren't home. But when they um came home, they seen a bullet went through their lamp. And I didn't know, damn, I didn't know a bullet could really go through all of that through brick. But uh, I didn't report it. And when I didn't report it, fucking, um, I moved everything. And then when I, an hour went by, I smoked a cigarette, about to go to sleep. Police outside with the flashlight. My dumbass just moved the shit back in the house. But I left the gun in the car way across the apartment complex. And um, people came and they fucking, uh, they wouldn't accept that it was an accident because I didn't report it. And I thought I was going to be good because the cop was like, cool, you know what I'm saying? He honestly probably would just gave me misuse of a firearm. You know what I'm saying? It was no harm, no foul. Them, them people, they, they kid play with my son. So it was like, they weren't really mad about the shit. When I got out of jail, they was really sorry about that shit. I was like, it's cool. It happens. But fucking, um, man, they ended up searching my shit and I had some illegal shit going on and ended up doing three months behind it. Thank God it was my only and first felony because I would have did five flat by all the shit that I had with a gun. You know, I had a $150,000 bond, bro. I thought I was never going home. So how did it feel to be in there, man? You know, to go from being a civilian to being an inmate. Two things. The first one is I'm so ambitious and I couldn't accomplish anything. And I was mad at God because I was like, God, my intentions is so good. And I talk to you every day about what I'm doing. Why am I not getting where, why am I held up, bro? Because it's not going to jail. It's getting out. And if you got the power to shake back. Because you go through jobs, you know, can't get certain jobs because you a felon. Your P.O. being, well, my P.O. cool because I always had two jobs when I got out. I had a good cover. I had a good cover. But um, the second thing, the worst thing about jail is being around people that are so unambitious. And you're, you're on the phone on holidays. You don't even want to answer the phone no more. You don't even want to call nobody. But holidays and shit, you just be like, I was like. I'm around here with people that can't wait to hit the pipe again, can't wait to hit the needle again, that, that are just, their mentality so stupid. And I just, I felt so trapped with a bunch of ignorant motherfuckers. That's like, I could, I could give you a million dollar game right now. You would never take it. And that's how I felt. I felt like an ambitious motherfucker around people that don't want anything for themselves. They just want that next high. Whether it's fighting, bitches, whatever. They'll be with baby mamas that have been cheating on them before they went to jail. You know, I was in Livingston prisons where you will find that shit. And I, but still, it stands there. Like, you don't accept a cookie from somebody, even if it's genuine type shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, if you got commissary, motherfucker watching you at the door getting that shit. Getting your cookies and mm-hmm. chips and shit. And shit, yeah. Like, but I only really, uh, man. I'll tell you my hustle. I never drank my juices. I gave away my milk. And I guess people might have thought, now that I'm thinking about it, that I was just genuine because I never wanted shit in return from people because I minded my own business. But um, when we went to Tensaw, I saved all my juices because I never drank my juices. I don't like sugar. I work out and drink water. So fucking, um, and I'm going to uh, Tensaw. I got Buku soups and I sell tea because if you sell tea instead of coffee, bro, 
that's way more. You get like 70 packets of tea, you know what I'm saying? So it's more profitable and it, more caffeine. But that, and then I had all them juices. So I ain't gonna lie, we smoking Mojo and Tensaw first day. Jill had fucking 30 juices. I knew that if it was something I didn't care, like I saved bread and I saved juices. I was just very conservative in that bitch. But shit, we had Mojo, we were smoking tea joints and shit. Like, Seemed like you adapted very fast, my brother. I knew, I knew humans, bro. And it, so could you do you the know, five flat? What is a five flat? Five years flat. I couldn't have done it. I mean, I would have had to. I would have had to have done it. You know what I'm saying? It was, you know, you would have just had to have done it, bro. But you would have been shipped, meet new people, and that's why I really, we survived in our corner. I'll say that because I knew them people. Twenty of us went to Tensaw, and we was locked up with a lot of Lake Charles people. And I ain't gonna lie, they they just fucking fucked up individuals, bro. They was a different breed of people over there. <laughs> Shout out to people from Lake Charles, but fucking uh. We had the pill call. We had one dude who was kind of crazy, but he was cool. I had a dude under me who I really didn't like. He was from Tens- He was from Lake Charles. But we had the pill call, so we always had the bartering power, and I had a little bit of commissary every week, so we kind of didn't run that corner, but like we was cool, and if Gio had something to say, Gio was, wasn't coming out on some bullshit. I wasn't on some bullshit. If Gio got something to say, you know he's telling the truth. You know, we had somebody in our corner get punched down because he would get an extra tray. He would finesse himself to get an extra tray every day. He'd put a hoodie on, go back in line, get an extra tray until somebody couldn't eat. But even though that person couldn't eat, we offered that. Well, a dude came back and was like, man, you do that shit again, it's going to be a problem. But dude didn't really be like, all right. He just kind of looked at him. So dude came back, punched him down, whatever the fuck, you know what I'm saying? And he came back pissed off. I was like, I told you, you should have at least acted on it. On some respect shit, because everything in jail is gonna be respect. And then I was like, now you gotta put them shoes on, bro, because now the whole corner gonna look bad if you don't put your shoes on and go back at him, because he really just punched you down. He's like, fuck it, give me some shoes. You know, everybody gonna give their shoes up. They wanna see this shit, bro. But he ended up uh, smacking the fuck out of dude. I mean, uh, punching the fuck out of dude. Everybody gonna get their shoes up. But it was even, but it was even. And me and the other dude that talked about that, because like I say, Gio keep to himself, but he in that corner. But I remember him coming to me like, bro, I didn't want to do that to dude, but I just felt like he didn't answer me respectfully. And I was like, I understand. But you got to understand, too, that dude was facing about 30 to life. So he didn't give a fuck anyway. We, we were pre-trial. We were about to get out, you know, at least in the next year, you know. But... Oh, bro, what's up, man? Jail, bro. Fuck jail, bro. Don't ever go to jail. Don't ever be trying to be cool to go to jail. It's cool to get money. It's cool to get money. All right, man. So what we got out right now, man? What's what? What's new? What's out? What so we could be looking for you know. So I got down below. Open heart surgery one point five is out right now. Part two gonna come when I feel like it's building because I'm putting bread into the places need to build because I'm a self independent artist. So any capital has got to come out of pocket, whether it's Spotify, YouTube, and which I'm gonna call it. Which a lot of people don't soak up that game. I don't know why they'll just get disappointed by views because I make. I'm from Baton Rouge, but I don't make Baton Rouge music.